Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Supermicro SCE813M and the motherboards that go inside, specifically the X9SCM, the X9SCM-F and the X9SCM-IIF. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Super Micro X9 SCM and the different variations of them. Uh, if you find anything useful in today's video, do us a favor and click that like and smash that subscribe. Well, hey, let's get started. Um, first things first, this chassis is uh, SC, SCE813M. You can put a ton of different motherboards inside. In this video, we spe specifically wanted to talk about the X9 SCM and then the three different variations of them that we talked about in the beginning. The specific one that we have here is the uh, dash double I F. Um, and really people ask what are the differences. Uh, if you have the F at the end, that means you're going to have IPMI. If you don't have the F at the end, there's no IPMI. Uh, the double I F, uh, I believe that has some extra giga, uh, gigabit ports. Uh, you know, if someone else who wants to drop a comment, uh, drop uh, some comments in that knows all the differences, that'd be great. Uh, for this video, we really want to talk more about uh, memory and CPUs. And the nice thing is, is that the uh, memory and CPUs are the exact same across all three boards, uh, which is very nice from a compatibility standpoint. So if you're at your data center and you want to have all three different variations for you know the different types of customers you have, then that's one thing that is nice that you only have to stock uh, the same type of RAM. Um, and on that note, there is a one CPU inside. It's an LGA1155 socket. It uses Intel Xeon E3 1200V1 or V2 series processors. What we actually recommend is the uh, Intel E3 1240V2 or the uh, Intel E3 1270V2. Those seem to be the big winners that we have with uh, our customers. That seems to be what everyone finds the most popular and what they really like. So that's what we always recommend and what we generally build ours with. Um, you can also use a couple other different processors. You can use uh, second or third gen uh, Intel Core i3 processors. You can also use in, uh, a couple different Intel Pentium or Celeron processors. But again, we recommend the E3 1200 series, uh, V2 specifically. Um, as far as the RAM is concerned, it takes DDR3 memory. There's four slots inside. You can use a couple of different speeds as low as uh, 1066, 1333, 1600, or all the way up to 1866, even though the 1866 generally clocks down to the 1600 megahertz. Um, as far as the different sizes, you can use a 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig, Gig or all the way up to an 8 gig. Unfortunately, no, there are no 16 gigs for this specific machine, really because 16 gig ECC unbuffered was never invented, which on that note, the type of RAM that this machine accepts is only one type of RAM, which is ECC unbuffered, which is your traditional server UDIM. No, it will not accept ECC registered, which is an RDIM. No, it will not accept ECC load reduced memory, which is your LR DIM. It is strictly ECC unbuffered memory. Um, so you need to be very careful when you're buying for this machine because unbuffered modules are generally a little bit more expensive than registered and we see people who try to buy registered and put them in there and then they run into all these issues and they wonder why and it's just not compatible so uh, with ECC unbuffered the max that you can get is 32 gigabytes using four eight gigs at 1866 which again it'll just clock down to 1600 megahertz so uh, now that we're a little bit more familiar with the machine let's go ahead and open it up I want to show you uh, how to actually install the DIMMs a couple of the techniques that we recommend just to be a little bit safe and make it easier for yourself and uh, show you the channels as well in case you're not loading all four DIMMs and let's say you're only putting one or two in and how you would do that so before we get in I'm gonna grab my ESD gear because you really never want to be inside your machine without any kind of protection so I'll be right back and uh, one thing I wanted to note before we get going, um, just in case you're interested in a couple of the other boards that might go for this machine, uh, we just did a video as well on the uh, X9SCL and the different variations that go with it, like the um, uh, dash F and the plus dash F as well. Uh, we're going to put a link up there in case you just wanted to check that out as well. So uh, anyhow, let's get rolling. Uh, now that I have my ESD gear on, I'm safe to open the machine. It's really simple. A lot of the um, uh, super micros are uh, built the same like this. You're going to have these two buttons right here. You're just going to push it down, pull it back, and you'll see it just separates and just pop it open pretty much like any other machine that you've been in. Okay, uh, now that we are in, you will notice um, the one CPU that we discussed, the LGA 1155 socket, the four DIMM slots, uh, which is what we're here to discuss a little bit more. Uh, with the four DIMM slots, you will notice there are two memory channels, and each memory channel has two DIMMs per channel. Uh, this is important to note uh, specifically for customers that are uh, really only putting in let's just say two dims uh, the proper way to do it would be to put it at the start of the channel which is the black dim slot the blue dim slot is the second so this right here will be your a1 and this will be your b1 this will be a2 and this will be b2 and that's exactly how I would do it one 
two, three, four. So if you're only putting in two, you would put them in the two blocks, A1 and B1. If you're only putting in one, you'd want to put it in A1, okay? So that's the, uh, the proper way to uh, load the machine. Um, and, and people ask, you know, why, why do you do it like that? Um, it, it's actually really simple. You can think about it logically. Um, if you um, uh, have one channel that's overloaded, it's taking on the, basically your entire load. What you really want to do is have uh, both of your memory channels doing work for you. Uh, just like, you know, two, two, two heads is better than one, right? So basically you have two channels, um, so one's not being fully overloaded and it just has a nice balance for your overall um, load and just gives you a higher performance. So uh, just some simple things like that to just uh, in, in make your make your life better, make everything a little easier for you. So um, another note that I wanted to do as we start to install these, uh, you will notice right here, there is a notch in the middle. This notch is known as the key. This key is really important because the key is not in uh, perfectly in the center. Uh, it's just off a little bit to the left. And uh, the problem with that is you have to make sure that you line this up properly. If I were to try to put it in like this, it would actually, uh, the there's a notch that sticks up, a little plastic piece inside the uh, the dim slot, and it would actually be off by you know maybe a quarter of an inch, half an inch, and what can happen is you can potentially damage the leads and ruin the module, or if you try to push too hard, it could actually break the, uh, the little plastic piece in there, potentially damage the dim slot, which would mean you'd have to replace the motherboard. None of this is, is uh, a great solution or something that anyone wants to happen over just simply installing some dims wrong. So really, that's the only thing you really kind of need to pay attention to is just to make sure you line them up properly. So in this case, it's going to be like this. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in right here. And one of the things that, oh, I didn't, one of the things I actually like to do too is I always like to make sure my tabs are fully open. This makes it a little bit easier for you. Um, so when you put it in right here, you'll notice, okay, it looks like the module's in. It feels like the module's in. I'm not holding it. Um, however, the module's not fully seated. And this is a problem that we see uh, quite often where a uh, user thinks that they have a bad dim um, and really the modules aren't properly seated. So a lot of times we'll just ask people to kind of rotate them around. And the reason we do that is because when you rotate them around, you'll end up just installing them a little bit better and want whichever one you didn't have fully seated will end up getting properly seated elsewhere. So what you want to hear is when you put them in, and Supermicro doesn't have very loud clicks, unfortunately, uh, compared to uh, to like Dell or HP. But when you put it in, the, t uh, the tab right here is just going to click into place on the side of the module. So you hit click one, click two, um, and then really you want to hear both clicks, and that's how you know. So if you, um, we'll zoom in right now again, and you'll see right here there's this notch on the side of the module. And what's happening is the tab is clip it, clipping it and pulling it down and fully inserting the leads into the dim slot. So um, it's really pretty simple, but it's, uh, it's important because if you don't fully seat it, then it won't read the module and then you think you have a bad dim and really it's just an installation error. So one of the other things that I like to do is right now, um, you know, if I was only only putting in two modules, we discussed you want to put them in the two black, but since I'm fully maxing it out, it really doesn't matter which ones you put in first and which ones you put in last as long as they're all loaded. So I'm actually going to come to this far outside one because there's all these cables. It's kind of a tight, uh, tight, snug fit over here. And if I put a dim right here, then I have even less space to work with. So I'm going to go ahead while I have a little bit extra space and I'm going to install this one and get this fully seated so I am not um, you know, working in a tight space because once I put this one in, there's really not a lot of room there. So just a little, little trick to make it easier on myself. So I mean, just like that, we can max it out to 32 gigabytes. Really, it takes a minute or two in, in real time. It's, it's a very simple process. Um, and that's one of the things that we always recommend and we tell people, if you're looking to extend the life of of your X9 SCM board and you don't want to have to you know maybe upgrade to a new X10 or a new X11 or even now the X12s are out um, and you you just want to you know get another couple years out of this the best band-aid in, in my opinion is the RAM upgrading your RAM and maxing out your RAM is really gonna go a lot lo lot further than some people think um, and it's the best way to just kind of boost your overall performance so uh, if you're at home and you know you got 4 gigs or 16 gigs inside and you're just like hey how can I get a little more out of this uh, really bump it up to 32 gigs and and you're gonna get a lot of um, additional performance over Overall. So anyhow, on that note, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, drop the top back on, which is very easy. Just going to line it up, click it into place. So 
Um, if you're looking for any upgrades yourself, do us a favor and email us for uh, email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor, click that like and smash that subscribe. Thanks a lot. Take care and have a great day.